we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country sound. We'll all be flying higher than a jetliner. And if you want a little bang in your yin yang, come along. Come on and welcome aboard the Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Coyle Larry. Coming to you live from the foul course at Indiana University on this unbelievably beautiful Bloomington morning. There is not a cloud in the sky. and It is perfect. No humidity. Man, if you have a tea time out here today, you're uh, lucky because if you don't, you're not playing. Uh, Todd Leary's out there. I got to get him off the practice screen. He's out there walking around. Uh, he'll be joining us here in a second. Uh, also, our chronic who's on the program today. Uh, but uh, looking forward to having a lot of fun out here. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the second day of uh, being open, they opened up yesterday. I think uh, the tea times were, they're selling them one day at a time, but the, the first block were gone in like 10, 15 minutes after midnight. Uh, so if you don't have a tea time already, you're not pro- you're probably not playing this week. Uh, so get yourself one, though, if you want to do that. But uh, looking forward to having a blast out here today. Todd uh, played this course last week. Uh, I didn't play. Uh, looking forward to talking to him a little bit more about that. Uh, and uh, Chronic Hoosier is going to join us as well. May have a few surprise guests uh, as well to talk about. But a lot of uh, action in the uh, college basketball world as things are picking up. Um, coaches can now contact players. I think if you go to the Hoosier.com, you can find all kinds of information that Alec Lasley has been killing it on, on who all Archie and uh, crew spoke with yesterday because there were a lot. Uh, everybody's reaching out and talking to people now and finding out who their 2022 targets are, uh, getting those guys in line. But uh, Isaac McNeely, one of those, number 77, uh, he's set to have a, a Zoom call with Coach Miller uh, yesterday at 6 o'clock. So uh, that he told Alec that. Uh, let's see. There was also AJ Casey. Uh, there's just so many. Alex Caravan. I know they talked to yesterday. Uh, Dante Davis. Indiana reached out to that three. He's a three-star wing. Who else? Did he, Alex Caravan. I mentioned number 99. He, he uh, already holds an offer from Indiana. So there's uh, one there. Leon Bond is another. So all kinds of action. Todd, you back with us? Here? I am he back with us. He is not. He is back with us. I got him off. Finally got him off the practice screen. <laughs> I am scouting out the practice screen. However, I don't have a club in hand. Yeah, well, that helps. Uh, it certainly helps to have one. But, man, it, it's early here, but people are flying. It's it's bam, bam, bam. And I'm sure they have to with the amount of interest in playing out, out here at the foul course. You better be on your time, on your tee time, because, man, uh, you, you can't fall behind out here. No, it, it is a uh, it's an operation that is uh, almost army like out here. I mean, they've got people coming in. You can't show up more than twenty five minutes before your tea time. They come here, they get you your cart, you head to the tea, and it is uh, it's clockwork out here right now. And absolutely, like I said, an absolutely beautiful day, man. You played this course last week. I mean, we talked about it some, but it's it's a difficult, difficult course, but it's also can be played by the average guy. It can, and, and you know it is. It's it can. Just, you, it can. <laughs> I like it can, that. It, it can. can. <laughs> it's it's uh it's much more difficult. It is it is a totally you know the old IU course. It wasn't that it wasn't difficult. I mean there was there was some tough holes on it. It just wasn't there wasn't anything fun and exciting about it. And this course is just dramatically different than that, and doesn't even look like uh the same you know the same piece of property even though a good portion of it is on the same property i mean we had coach mike mayer rode around with don fisher and i last week when we got to play and you know he was explaining where we are and half the time i mean this is a course that don fisher's probably played you know several hundred times in his 40 years at iu and and at certain points i mean we would be like okay well where 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 are we on the old course like you literally cannot figure out where you even were it's that dramatically different they've moved that much dirt and and the whole layout is different it's much more of a link style course with a lot of hay and heather um but the you know the highlight of the entire course is the greens i mean the greens are the greens look like they've been there for 30 years i mean they are fantastic and they roll great and they're fast and they've got elephants buried in the middle of all of them and it's uh, it, it's it's just it's so much different the experience if if you ever played the old course don't feel like you've ever played the iu course now because it is totally different even though it's on the same property 
Man, looking forward to eventually uh, playing it. I've been. I got to make sure my game is a little bit sharper before I go out there. I don't want to be looking <laughs> for balls all day long. Uh, a lot yeah. of action. I was talking a lot of action uh, in the recruiting world. Uh, coaches can contact players again, and several of the 2022 targets uh, RC and crew have been reaching out to. I listed some of those, but uh, others. Bruce Thornton, Indiana, reached out to. He's a four-star point guard. Uh, number 19 for the AU director. Uh, so uh, he's a top priority for IU in this class. So they were, I think I, Alec may have said they talked to maybe 22 people yesterday. Scott Clark. I mean, they, they, it's a busy, busy day. And, and when you can't get out and about, I mean, it makes it a little easier, I guess, because you have to do everything by phone, by Zoom, by whatever means necessary. But uh, you can sure schedule them uh, a lot more that way. Yeah, you know, you know the here's here's the difference. I mean, we're kind of getting to see, you know, the the beginning of the process all the way down to the fruits of your labor at the end. And in Trey Patterson making his decision on Thursday, I mean, that's the end result of you know three years worth of recruiting, and and sometimes you know four and five years worth of recruiting. So you see that open up for the 2022 guys, and um, you know they've all probably been contacted by coaches at some point you know either just as with a wave at an AAU tournament or whatever it might be but um, you know you're kind of getting to see the whole process you got to put the work in right now as a coaching staff and a recruiting staff in order to to have a chance to get these guys you know when they're ready to make their decision like Trey Patterson is on Thursday. Well and Archie is uh, and crew uh, in the basketball program they're in pretty good shape right now recruiting wise they got you know we've talked about uh, you use the term the right kids. Uh, you know they're getting talented kids in, but they're get the right. They're getting the right talented kids in now. And next year they can really he can double down on that if he can get if he can get Trey Kaufman if he can get uh, uh, Miller uh, Mason Miller. Um, who knows? If you add a shooter to that on top of that, there th- this talent could just almost double uh, itself in a year. Yeah, it, you know here's here's the here's the part of the recruiting that you kind of love when you get a good base. And right now Indiana has a good base, which means they've got kids that when someone comes on a recruiting visit or, or, you know, a family comes in and and visits Indiana university, they get to hang out with uh, Trace Jackson Davis and, and Trey Galloway and Anthony Leal and uh, Rob Finnessy and Armand Franklin. I mean, they're hanging out with not just good players, but good kids. And, and you hear so many times, I mean, one of the biggest decisions that you make is where you're going to go to college as a basketball player. And, and one of the biggest parts of that decision is being comfortable and finding a place that you fit in. And and every single guy we hear talk about making his decision, you know, talks about, you know, he was comfortable at a certain place or he fit in there or, or something clicked for him at the place. And, Man, it sure makes recruiting a lot easier when you've got guys that are not cool guys, uh, that that are good people, that you know complete normal sentences and and are nice and polite and um, and then when you got the Indiana fan base, I, I I keep going back and forth. Like you know, I I keep going back and forth on Trey Patterson. I, I think there's a more of a likelihood now than I did before that he may pick IU, and it's for the reason I just gave you. Um, now. Everything's stacked against him. If he doesn't pick Villanova, I'll be surprised. But I, I also wouldn't fall over in my chair if he picked IU because they've got they, – they check a lot of boxes. And, and one of those big boxes is, you know, feeling comfortable and liking the coaching staff and where you are. And, and I think IU checks those boxes. Well, uh, perfect timing because he's down to his final three in regard to Trey Patterson. And uh, it's uh, Indiana and Villanova, as you mentioned, and also uh, I think Florida. Florida, so, yeah. So, and, and uh, you know, look at, look at all three of those schools. They've all, got, they've all got strong coaches that are good, you know, good people. I mean, Mike White down at Florida is just a – I mean, he's a good – he looks like a player's coach. We know Jay Wright. Everybody loves playing for him. The IU fan base – you know, puts that separates them from the other two places. It's a blue blood. The other two are not blue bloods, but you know, there's just a ton of factors that go into it. But the fact that you've got, you know, kids like Trace Jackson Davis and, and that group, you know, helping recruit, boy, it just, it, it, it just feeds off of itself. And, and that's why I truly think they might have a chance. 
Well, we we've talked. I mean, there's no secret. Good players want to play with good players. Now they want to be the guy, but they want to play with good players. They want to be on a good team that's gonna that has a chance to win. And that has never been more of a realistic possibility for Indiana basketball than than it is here now than than the last few years. And, and you know, I mean, you talk about being a part of the change. Um, you know, Villanova has been a little bit more established, obviously. Uh, in the last 10 years, 15 years. Um, but if you look at it overall in the history of, I obviously Indiana is, is definitely sets itself above both Florida and Villanova. Um, but man, you look at what the opportunities are right now, the guys coming back, uh, you know, Villanova has a decent, uh, a decently strong freshman class they had last year. They'll be back. But besides that, I mean, Indiana for sure, uh, I think we also wins the category of, of expectations for next year when it, when it comes to the returning players. Indiana baseball also picked up a player with uh, Aiden Decker Petty uh, announced uh, on, uh, I guess that was Twitter yesterday announced that he'll be joining coach Mercer in the Indiana baseball program. So congratulations to him. But uh, yeah, lots, lots going on right now, man. They, they've been kind of sequestered. The coach has been no contact period. And man, you talk about busting out. Yesterday well, yeah. was just a busy, busy day. You look at the, the campus opens up yesterday and how much news comes out of, you know, the campus in Bloomington yesterday with, with all the different sports. So, or so many different sports. So yeah, you, you knew once it opened up, these coaches are going to be chomping at the bit to, you know, make some noise and, and get their, their schools and their, their programs back out there. And, um, you know, it's, I think we were all excited about what would happen on that first day of opening up. And I know just driving through campus, seeing the football players and seeing some of the basketball players on campus was, was a good sight yesterday. Yeah. There's a lot of, just a lot of excitement, uh, just having people back and all that. And, uh, uh, looking forward to, to, to getting everything moving forward. I mean, just having the golf course open is great. So, Speaking of the golf course, we're going to be joined after this break by Jeff Overton, probably the most decorated IU golfer of all time and uh, winner of over $12 million on the PGA Tour in his career. So excited Chump to change. talk to him about the new course. Chump change. In Chump today's, change. Gol- in today's <laughs> world, it kind of is. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. No, that's awesome. Yeah, what, this is one of the big names, man. If you know Jeff Overton, Indiana Golf, he's one of the – besides Fuzzy Zeller, him and Jeff Overton, the two most famous uh, golf names, and Fuzzy didn't even play at IU. But, yeah, uh, I mean, from, from an IU connection. perspective, yeah, Jeff's definitely the most the most famous IU golf. Absolutely. Looking forward to that. I'm sure he's looking forward to getting out here and playing the course as well. We're yeah, to get he's you to get out of the wind there. You're the wind's killing you over there. Am I? Yeah, I'm trying to hide from you so we don't have interference. But yeah, uh, it, it's a little. You don't want to play this course. We're in social the wind, dis- We're social distancing even in this maneuver. We're we're trying to social distance <laughs> as we see the the club pro here, Jimmy St. John, going by. He's got his mask on. I mean, they're they're following some protocols out here, but it's not. You don't have to play with a mask or anything. They just. They're, uh, I noticed just up around lots. the clubhouse. Yeah, those yeah. the parking lots. You know, they have spaces blocked off, so every other space. But uh, uh, everything else, man, you get out here and you just whack at it. Just go, go at it. I mean, uh, I see there's three or four guys over there on the driving range. <laughs> They're getting their licks in. They uh, they don't want to. You cannot hit this course raw. No, no doubt. Like the, the practice facility is. I mean, the old practice facility was kind of a joke, just like the course was. But this new one is. It's legit. They've got a great short game area. And it's pretty awesome. We'll be right back with more. You're listening to Indiana Sports Beat, coming to you live from the foul course here at Indiana University. Joining us next, Indiana's most famous golfer, Jeff Overton. Stay tuned. We're back with more right, th- right after this. Cold beer on a Friday night, a pair of jeans that fit just right, and a radio. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs. Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. 
We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit fda.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. This is former Indiana basketball player Brian Evans, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat with Jim Coyle. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million-dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Leary coming to you live from the foul course at Indiana University today on this unbelievable, beautiful Tuesday and cannot be any more appropriate to have the biggest name in the history of Indiana golf, Jeff Overton, joining us. Jeff, thank you so much, man, for taking time to be with us. Absolutely, yeah. How are things going in Florida? I know you're down in Florida. Uh, have, you, have you seen the course yet uh, at all? You know, whenever I got, I got the chance last year to come back and kind of drive around it and see it, and it's, uh, it's uh, what a beautiful spot. Um, Fuzzy, Ned, Smyers, Spider Miller, I did, a lot of big names down there in southern Indiana all were huge uh, people involved in building this uh, kind of a dream golf course, and uh, it's it's just amazing that they were able to get it done, and it's super exciting. There's a, I know there's, I've talked to a lot of people. There's a lot of people excited to – now that it's open to get down, get up and play it. And uh, it's, it's awesome. It's going to do nothing but help recruiting out for, for uh, Coach Mayer. And uh, I'm super stoked about it. A little bit that, nicer that, than that, the course you played on, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was going to be my next question, Jeff, was, was as a player, like how big of a factor is it? I mean, we know, we know Purdue's course is obviously really nice and, and Ohio State's is really nice. How big a factor is the actual golf course in making your decision where to go as a, as a recruited golfer? You know, I think that there's a lot of uh, deciphering aspects, if you were to say, um, as far as when you're recruiting on where to go to school. And, you know, obviously, the better the facilities, the more opportunity you have. And when you're talking about the big-time college athletics at a Big Ten university, it's, it's nice to, you know, you think about 
the IU course being right there, you know, walking distance basically from dorms along with Assembly Hall, like there's really not too many universities that have the overall, all the sports, you know, right there in that little same complex, uh, super close, you know, because people, you know, when you're going to class, you know, you got classes first, then the school's next, and it's uh, it's nice whenever you only have to drive, you know, five minutes away to go to the golf course to get your practice in versus some place you might have to go 30, 45 minutes and then, you know, you think about, like, the in-state kids that are really, you know, generally speaking, if you're kind of in the Midwest, you're, it's the type of, you know, people that you're used to and, the, and being close to home. And it's such a big, uh, I guess you could say it's just a big um, change when you go from high school to college. And it's kind of nice that you have such an awesome golf course and then the, the practice facility if if you're one of those top recruits, it's hard to, uh, it, it be, and you're from Indiana, it'd be hard to not want to go to school there with this golf course. Yeah, it's a, such a beautiful layout as I'm sitting here looking out upon it. I'm kind of jealous that I have to sit here and go out. But I remember playing on it when I was back, back in the day, and uh, I can't imagine it, uh, the difference this thing must make. But uh, how are things going with you? I know you're down in Florida uh, uh, trying to get back into swing of everything, but how's life going? Life's going. I've been uh, just been struggling with – back and i uh, just been doing a lot of exercises trying to get the thing healthy enough to swing again it's just been a uh, it's been a tough little battle but um needless to say it's uh it's whatever hopefully one day we'll we'll get healthy again enough to uh maybe we'll be able to be competitive again is the is the dream but it's just it's hard to uh still hard to kind of bend over so it hasn't really been i haven't really been able to do much <laughs> practicing and stuff unfortunately have you had the opportunity over the winter i know you you, you dealt with the health, health issues and that stuff have you had the opportunity to come back and go to a basketball game i know i saw some pictures but i think that was from a few years ago uh do you make it back to indiana very often I was able to come back. Like, well, I usually get back there once or twice a year. I was able to come back, you know, for a couple of years. Yeah, I've been I've been able to make it back there a little bit, but uh, not as much as if I was able to be golfing. You know, I'd definitely be back there, taking advantage of that new golf course and facilities and what have you a little bit, working with Coach Mayer and all that good stuff like the old days. But uh, and hopefully one of these days it'll happen. It's just it's whatever reason it's just timing is not on my side at this moment for golf but uh i'm definitely working my tail end off if you could say to get back it's just it hasn't uh haven't been able to quite get out of pain all the way yet so well, you're always with us in spirit because we do uh last year we did the iu basketball post game show from yogis and your golf bag was hanging over us every every show we did there's your golf bag hanging above us <laughs> good old yogis there's nothing like bloomington so many good spots i guess yogis is gone now but uh man there's a lot of history there in bloomington and uh, what a great little uh what a great town that is obviously yogis has resurfaced actually there's a new location uh downtown so uh that's what i meant your your, your golf ball's in the new location in the new yogis so we, we stared at that all every game last year man it has been a while since i've been back there <laughs> <laughs> What's so what, what what's the plan with the game? I know you talk about dealing with the health issues and it's so important. And we hear that a lot with, with golfers. The back issue, man, it's such a big part, obviously, when you're swinging all that time. But, man, is that so crucial and, and something you have to get past, especially at this age. Uh, what, what's the plan? Yeah, I don't know. It's just, you know, I, I'm just lucky to be alive when you get an infection in your spine. And it, it, it's not good. And uh, it was, I'm just glad I can – walk there for a while I was I don't know it was just it's been through a lot I just continue to grind it out and keep doing some of these exercises and keep researching some of the uh the, the spine stuff and um it's uh it's definitely a tough thing to I guess overcome getting an infection in the bone in your bone in your back and uh just it's tough. So just, I don't know, but I'm excited about the, the new golf course there and uh, just try to make light on 
the situation and uh, just move forward. And, you know, I don't know where, what's going to be next or how long it's going to take. It's just, it's just, as, as, a, as a professional golfer, obviously, uh, golf coming back last weekend and, and uh, you know, what what would the biggest differences be or would it be a huge difference in not having the fans on the course? I know in watching it, it made a bit of a difference, and, and but, but I kind of got used to it. And after a while, I don't even think I really noticed it. As a player, how much different would that be and, and would it be a, a huge factor for you? You know, I think uh, I think I think probably not having fans in other sports would probably impact it more. I mean, you, you look at like home court advantage and college basketball and college football and NFL. And, you know, the whole you ride that momentum, all the all the good vibes from the crowd, and you know, whereas golf, it's a little more of an individual game, and you have a lot of people that are cheering for different people but they're really usually cheering for great shots and i guess it, it i don't know i guess you you have some guys maybe it would would affect a little more than others and um it's you know i guess golf is to me has always been kind of a game you get outside and you're in harmony with the uh the environment and whenever you have peop- more people you know obviously there's more things that you have to uh adapt to Whereas if there's not a, there are no fans, you know, you just are you're out there playing your game, and maybe it's a little easier to to not think about like the I don't know some of the things just that might get in people's way, I guess. Um, you know, or you know, you have some like the fans yelling for one guy, or like if there's a big Tiger crowd or Phil crowd, you know, you might have a big group of people that are really wanting to watch those guys versus you know others and uh, so I mean I definitely think there's it, it's it can affect some people more than others but I think that all around it's at least it's a good thing that people are able to see some kind of a live action sport on TV because um, there is you know as far as viewers go there's more people watching it probably on television generally speaking week in week out than there is that actually show up to the events however it is an unfortunate thing because as you know, the uh, tourist raises a whole bunch of charity dollars, and by not being able to have the people and the the fans out there to give them that awesome on course uh, environment, it, it's it's tough. I don't. So it's it's hopefully hopefully eventually they'll be able to get fans back in it, and life will move back onwards how it was moving before. And uh, but right now, with this tough little time, I, it's probably good to just everybody uh kind of quarantine per se a little bit yeah that's uh where we're uh pretty much left at now and uh, hopefully you uh, can improve uh your golf game or whatever you, you're trying to do if you're at home trying to get through this but uh yeah jeff i cannot thank you enough for taking time to join us here on today and we wish you the best as you rehab and get back into things because we everybody wants to see you back on the course man well i appreciate it i do too <laughs> <laughs> I bet no one more. Jeff Overton joining us today from Florida. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks. You See you, buddy. Jeff Overton, former IU golfer, joining us here as we're coming to you live from the foul course at Indiana University on Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Uh, man, just fun talking to him. And you know, like I said, golfers, the back, and I know it's for him it was different because he had a uh, a completely different situation. But like even Fuzzy or the, the guys, you so many of them have back issues. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it was interesting a long time ago, and, and I've always been a huge Tiger Woods fan. And I remember years ago, I remember seeing an interview with Jack Nicholas, and they were talking about the pace that Tiger Wood was, Woods was on and, um, you know, how he was probably going to smash his, his uh, major victory record and all that. And, and Jack Nicholas said at the time, and I kind of thought it was sour grapes. I thought he was kind of being, a, you know, a, just a, a not loving Tiger Woods moment. Uh, and he said, you know, as long as Tiger stays healthy, I think he'll probably beat my record. But if he doesn't, which is a very hard thing to do, uh, you know, it'll be difficult for him. And I thought to myself, boy, that's that's kind of silly. I mean, it's golf. He's, of course he's going to stay healthy. But you're exactly right. I mean, the, what we talked about in Tiger's neck issues and back issues and knee issues and everything popped up. And, and you know, it, it, health, health is a big issue in all sports, and we don't think about it as much in golf because it's not a physical contact sport. 
but man, these guys take a beating out there. And when you practice and hit as many balls as they do, you know, obviously your back's one of the toughest things uh, to, to keep healthy. Are golfers athletes? <laughs> uh, 100% they're athletes. <laughs> <laughs> a golfer's an athlete, but a, a, a stock car driver's not. Of course. Oh, I mean, that's kidding. totally different. It's totally uh, different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're coming to you live from the foul course at Indiana University. It is absolutely gorgeous out of here. Of course, uh, usually we're coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. And not only that, we got all kinds of – we got golf coming out the years right now, but it's that time of year. If you're looking at something for Father's Day, man, I got a great deal for you. You can get him down to uh, French Lake, get major dad points his Father's Day by treating him to a round on the Donald Ross course at French Lake. Dad plays for just $1 with a full paid round on Sunday, June 21st. Hurry, tee times will last. Call 812-936-5523. That's 812-936-5523. Fuck for the round. That ain't too bad, man. We got lots more coming. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy good. We got more coming up. Uh, Chronic Hoosier is going to join us next as we're coming to you from the foul course at Indiana University. Back with more right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Speed. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway, Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Rain Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. This is former Indiana basketball player Brian Evans, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat with Jim Coyle. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Hello, 
Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat. Coyle Larry coming to you today from the golf the foul course at Indiana University. Brand new opening up yesterday. Join up a lot of people enjoying this out here. So and and why would you not? It is an unbelievable. This is a what you call Chamber of Commerce Day, Todd Larry. Well, I tell you what, they uh, you know it's been a long time coming to open up, and I know they would have liked to have done it a lot sooner. But you talk about getting the perfect week of weather in your opening week. Uh, we definitely have it here in Bloomington. No doubt about that, man. And people are getting their uh, swings in today. But the thing is, if you don't have a tee time right now for this week, you're not playing. Uh, I know the is first set of tee time. Oh yeah, the first set of tee times for Monday went on sale i don't know if it was the day before or not but it was like 15 minutes max and they were all gone um so we're up to i think friday i think uh caitlin from uh, iu sports media said uh, maybe friday they're booked to friday right now wow well i know i know uh about 15 golfers here in bloomington and i know every one of them joined this course so it was it was obviously much anticipated i know fuzzy's name and Steve Smyer's name being associated with it, it got a lot of excitement for it. I know, you know, Mr. Smyers was responsible for Wolf Run and several other courses in the state of Indiana. So there's just a lot of excitement about what the course is going to look like. And, and I'll tell you, if you've ever played Wolf Run, uh, this course is very, very similar. It has a lot of shots that look very similar to certain shots at Wolf Run, which is, you know, in many people's opinion, one of the toughest or the toughest course in the state of Indiana. So. Um, you know, it's, it's very difficult. However, it's in such great shape. It makes it just fun to play. It is, it's a fun, fun course. Well, yeah, cause I, as I look out there and I haven't been uh, around the course yet, uh, maybe I'll grab a car today and go out there, but it looks like at least it's open that it's not too narrow. It's fair. It's playable. I mean, the, the, there's plenty of room to drive the ball. Um, it is, you know, if, like I said, with Wolf Run, Wolf Run, the biggest deal is if you hit it outside the fairway, I mean, you almost had to hit another ball. Like, you almost lost your ball. And this is not that way. Like, there's there's plenty of room out there to drive the ball. It's just, it's a long course. I mean, you think about it, Jim. I mean, this golf course is 7,900 yards. Now, the, the, the average person is going to play it more like 6,400 yards. But if you consider that, I mean, you're looking at, at <laughs> a, a third of the golf course is, is behind you. In, in what you would play at 6,400 yards. So it's it's pretty amazing at, at how tough they can make it out here. Yeah, that's nuts. I mean, when well, they have like six or seven tee boxes? At least. And some of them you look at, it's hilarious to look at where some of the tee boxes are compared to where the average person is going to play. I mean, you can literally turn around and there's 125 yards back to the back tee box. Now, even the college team, and, and I asked, I asked Coach, mayor when when we were here the other day i asked him at what yardage they would play most of the tournaments for the college tournaments and they'll play them around 7200 maybe 7300 yards so a lot of the 7900 yards um you know that's if you played it all the way back on every hole which even the pga tour when they go to certain events i mean they don't play it all the way back on every hole so um, you know, they've got the opportunity to make it as tough as they want. They also can make it extremely playable if, if the weather is tough. And, and he told me that was one of the big factors in how long they set the golf course up for tournaments is what the weather's like. Well, not only that, and I heard Coach Mayer last week talking about how they can, because of what you're talking about, having all those options and that distance, they can change the course to where they are going. Uh, to to kind yep. of, not completely like it, but you, you can kind of simulate – kind of get close to where they're going to so they can practice in that way that's a huge advantage it, it really is and you know you can we were looking at it the par threes to me are the biggest difference in example because you can take a par three that that you know fish and i were playing last week and it was 155 yards you can you can go to the back tee and turn it into a 243 yard par three which obviously is a much different hole that's that's a driver for a lot of people so it's uh they can make it as as difficult as they want but then it's it's exactly what you're saying if they're going to go to a course you know the scarlet course at ohio state's and the camping course at purdue or the two of the most famous in the big 10 courses and and you if you're going to play you know par threes that are 200 plus yards the whole time well iu players will be able to practice that now because they've got a facility where you know they can set the par threes up for for you know almost exactly the same shots they're going to hit when they go to a tournament 
I was watching, uh, I, I think this was a replay. Uh, I was watching uh, the, the Infinity Race last night, but the kit from, from Mitchell won, uh, Chase Briscoe. Uh, he's won a couple of races here. Yeah, he's won from Dar- he's won in Darlington, and now uh, last night they're in Miami, but uh, or not last night, but I think this was the other day. But but what, man, what number what number car is he? You he's ninety eight. He's the ninety eight car. You got to start referring to the ninety eight. He's the ninety eight, and the eleven is uh, Justin Haley from up uh, up northern Indiana. So you got and they're both top ten racers. They're both doing extremely well. But Chase Briscoe now he wasn't this week, but next week he'll be available. They've got this uh, dash for cash where the the top four I think become eligible the following week. Uh, the top finisher in that gets another extra hundred thousand dollars. So uh, there's a little bonus there for him. Is his name? I mean, Chase Briscoe is a great NASCAR name. Is, Third think, generation driver on top is of that. that. Is is that a real name? Is that yes. a real name? Is that a driver name? Third generation driver. Is that his real name? Chase Briscoe? That's a real name? Yeah, that's why he keeps, yes. He is, he's a third generation driver. That's what his family does, drive. They, so they, they're going to use those. Um, yeah. They're, they're, sticking with the, they're sticking with the real name. I mean, you know, it's like, I don't even know what to compare it to, but it's almost like a stage name for a lot of, for a lot of different guys. There's well, no because way. because he was, his stage was set, though, basically, when you're a third generation it. something. That's, that's why I asked. Yeah. You never know. Heck yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, that's a legit NASCAR name though. Yeah. You got that right. <laughs> uh, I still prefer Dick trickle. That's always the all time favorite. It's the best name. That's what I mean. Like you can't make that stuff up. No, oh, I mean, yeah, they, there's just some great ones. I mean, Coparn. I mean, they just got some great names in NASCAR, man. I mean, I think, I think in Talladega nights, they would have used the name Dick trickle if it weren't already a legit name. I mean, it's almost too funny to even use because it's it, real. They used a variation of it, I think. I can't remember. There was somebody in there that had a funny name. It was that was kind of similar to that. But um, Tim hit the text line. Said uh, Richard Petty used to drive with a wet rag hanging from his mouth because he got so dehydrated during races. Yeah, don't that doesn't surprise me. This guy's passed out. But uh, yeah, congratulations to Chase Briscoe, Mitchell kid. A lot of news guy. Mitchell, they got a new basketball coach. I heard uh, on the radio the other day. So a little, a lot of news coming out of little Mitchell. Uh, so congratulations to those guys. But Chase Briscoe, man, that's a, that's a big deal. I mean, that's that's the big that's that's like that's like uh, winning a, a Golden Glove in AAA baseball. You're 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 knocking on the door. You're ready. He's he's going to be on the Cup circuit probably next year. He no doubt he's won. Like you said, he's won two races already this year. So I would be shocked if he's not on the Cup uh, circuit next season. Yeah, I don't even I don't even follow NASCAR as I say almost daily on the show but i've heard his name on espn and winning you know like i said twice or a couple times in the last month so yeah he's having a solid uh, a solid season and that's what it takes to, to propel you up to that next level absolutely uh at least uh, i don't have to hit from the women's tees here that would be bad wouldn't it if he put me out there at the, the foul course I, I bet the women's tees are as far back though as the white tees some places <laughs> I, you know what, like it, it's funny because the way they had it set up, they only had a couple of tea boxes out for us when we played in the media day last week. And, um, you know, it was really interesting because it was basically set up to where it was like a senior tea or just a regular, the white teas. And, um, boy, it really, it really would be fun to, to take a day and go out and play this course. You know, I don't want to say from 7,900 yards, but play it like they wouldn't in a, in a, collegiate tournament at like 72 or 300 yards and see really what you'd score at that point it's it's it would be a lot of fun it'd be frustrating but it'd be a lot of fun for for i forget uh man there's you talk about a great offer if you subscribe to the hoosier.com you get free iu team gear uh basically it matches it uh, i think a uh, one year subscription is at half price 49 dollars, but you get a 49 dollar coupon uh, to get some free IU gear with that. You can go to the Hoosier.com for uh, all the details. But, man, Alec Lasley has got tons of new information of the IU basketball up. Uh, talked to a lot. He talked to a lot of people yesterday because a lot of people were talking uh, to Archie Miller yesterday. He was a very, very busy dude uh, as things open back up. And that's, man, they, they have to make hay when the sun shines. And, you know, they've been chomping at the bit. To, to get back on the phone to talk to these guys because they can't get them on campus. And, and uh, Indiana is one of those places where getting them on campus is a huge advantage because yep. you, you just 
enough said assembly hall you walk through there i mean you look up the banners the whole deal uh that is one of the advantages that that iu has but it has not seemed to hurt him luckily in this past class this was more of a localized class but it doesn't even seem to be hurting him much as they move forward because they they seem to be in good position with the guys they need to get well you you said it exactly right i mean this campus I mean, it's just beautiful. I, I, I don't care if you're an IU fan or not. You can get people that go and, and, you know, are looking for schools for their kid to go to, and they go in the springtime. I mean, this time of year, with, with the rain that we've had and now the sunshine for the last couple of weeks, the campus is as beautiful as ever. And you're exactly right. I mean, it's not the determining factor, but it is a determining factor when a recruit comes to campus and sees, you know, how beautiful it is and how nice it is. I know the Southern – you know, down the SEC schools for football, especially, I know they, they highlight their campuses and, you know, they're all taking tours of the campuses and it is a big factor. I mean, those on-site visits are, the facilities are, are probably the biggest issue. Besides that, you know, seeing where, you know, where the dorms are in relation to the sports arenas and, and, the, you know, places to eat, having Kirkwood and that whole area. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. And, I, and I'm not just saying that as an IU fan. I mean, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful campus. And it, it hurts Indiana to not be able to get these kids on campus. Jordan Geronimo, a perfect example. I, I think, I mean, I don't know this for a fact because I wasn't there, but I know when he was offered, uh, he, he, he accepted the next day officially. That tells me I would not be surprised if he did not accept on the spot of when he was offered and was told, oh, go home and think about it at least. But uh, he was blown away when he got here. And the minute he, he did it, he was ready to commit. Yeah. And I mean, you know, think about it. Like if, if you're not seeking a ton of media attention and, and for whatever reason that might be, I'm not saying you're a bad person if you're doing that, but if you're not doing that, once you visited Indiana and you have that opportunity to go there, Coach Knight said it the best when he said it to me. I mean, you you either know or you don't. And if you don't, then you're probably not choosing the right place. And so, you know, if you don't know this is where you want to go, they really kind of don't want you. Now, it's a different world. I know it's not exactly the same as it used to be with all that. But it certainly is nice to have a guy like Jordan Geronimo who recognized the beauty of the campus, the the, you know, how big the program has been in the past and where the program's headed and – I said this earlier, and I think this is truly the biggest factor in today's world. Recruits have changed. Everything has changed. And one of the biggest factors to me is the comfort level of that a kid has with the current players that are there and the guys he's going to be playing with and the coaching staff. And that's where I think – that's why Indiana's striking gold right now because they have – they've done the hard work and brought in good kids. They're talented kids, and they're good people to be around and fun. And that's a big factor in, in bringing in top recruits. Yeah, because one of the things that you'll see, if you if you get to an Indiana basketball game early, early enough to watch the opposing team arrive to come out for shoot-around or their first walkthrough, a lot of the time you're going to see guys that are just like going, looking around, they've got their cameras out because it's a, it's a mecca of sorts. It's, it's one of the places, man. Uh, I don't care what what opposing people think. It's Assembly Hall is just one of the uh, one of the spots in college basketball. Uh, so and they and they know that. And when they get there, they know that they're in a historic venue. Um, so they're kind of and that's how it used to be. I mean, you were already ten points down when they got to the arena, right? Before before the ball was tipped up, they kind of they need to get back to that. And and they're not far away. I don't think it, it wouldn't take much to get back there. Totally agree. I mean, you're, you're right on the money and, and, you know, it's, it is always one of those things. I mean, I, I drove through um, North Carolina several years ago and, and, you know, I was, I was 20 minutes away from Cameron indoor stadium at Duke and I just wanted to go see it. I mean, I, I get it. I understand why people feel that way about assembly hall. I've seen Cameron indoor stadium on TV so many times. I just wanted to see it. And you know, th- that that's not the case. If I drove by West Virginia, like I don't, I'm not, I don't care what West Virginia's arena looks like, but, but there's just certain places that, that have that historic, you know, Rupp arena for Kentucky. I hate to give them any credit, but that's one of those places you just want to see. And assembly hall has that for Indiana. So nothing to see, but at least the Rupp arena is nothing to see. It's a tomb. It's, it's in a tomb in a mall. It's yeah, it looks weird. It's, it's almost like 
It's in a freaking Madison mall. Square Garden. It's almost like Madison Square Garden, where it, you don't even know it's a basketball arena until you get inside it. But it, it looks like a big warehouse. Like it's it it's nothing from the outside, that's for sure. Boy, Madison Square Garden. You talk about knowing that you're at some place when you're there inside of it. I don't know what it is, but the 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 aura, the era, it just ooh, it, it just envelops you. Uh, yeah, I, I can't I imagine you. playing. I can't imagine playing on that floor. Yeah, it it was. So when you go in there, here's the funny part. You know, like a lot of places, and it's probably different now. Remember, I'm talking 30 years ago, but but it was funny because you have this big hype about going to Madison Square Garden, and we went there and played in the in the preseason NIT in the finals. And you go in there and you walk into these locker rooms and it's worse than like a high school locker room. I mean, they're these dumpy little tiny, small locker rooms with, with, you know, the metal um, lockers and it just kind of what you would think about as an old high school locker room. And it was junk, but just the, the atmosphere and the aura of it, you're like, Oh, everybody just says, Oh my gosh, this place is the best place ever. And then you get out on the floor and it's just like, yeah, you kind of get it. It's like walking. It's not the same because I think Augusta is the greatest place on earth. But it's kind of the same feeling as you walk out on the court and you look around. And you're like, oh, man, yeah, Jordan has done his stuff here. And all the things that have happened on that floor and that court in that city. Uh, yeah, it, it, it makes it totally a different experience once you get out on the court. Had my mic turned down because I was talking to somebody. I forgot. <laughs> I said coming up. I was, I was actually talking to Jimmy St. John, the, the club pro here at the, at the course. He's going to be able to join us. He didn't. I was he watching was your mouth move, but nothing was coming out. Well, that's you. Well, that's usually the case. So that's, <laughs> that's, no, that's what no we different. For a lot of times. That's no different than any other time. Well, there's usually if there's a sound or not, there's usually nothing coming out. Worth, yeah, worth nothing listening. important. But uh, yeah, looking forward to talking to him uh, here in a little bit. Uh, the club pro. I mean, can you imagine being a pro at a place? As beautiful this brand new, it's like it's brand spanking new. Uh, it's like having a new car. Yeah, it, it's like having a new car that's a Porsche or a Lamborghini. Like it is after you've driven a, a Fiat your whole life. Um, it, it is, it's a big time deal. And and you know, I was talking to Coach Mayer about it. Coach Mayer has actually been here at IU since since I was here since I got here in 1989. Um, and I I was thinking about the responsibilities. It's funny because as a coach. I would kind of think him to be in charge of the golf course, but he's really not at all. Jimmy St. John, the the head pro, is the guy here. And um, it was just I, – I guess I never thought it through, but but the head pro here at uh, at the new course is just – he's as excited as anybody about the possibilities of what this thing can be. The foul course. That India. Kind of a cool name. I know it's spelled kind it's of different, awesome but you know what? Because, yeah. It's awesome because nobody knows how to pronounce it. It's just – Indiana has cool. has those names. You got Simon Scope and uh, Foul. You know, we <laughs> foul, not make, foul we're, not, course. we're not making it easy on anybody. But yeah, uh, for sure. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's kind of a cool name, the Foul Course. I like that actually. It's kind of cool. It's got a good ring to it. But uh, yeah, looking forward to talking to Jimmy. I wonder how many times he's played this course. Once. Once I, that's so it. I asked him the other day. He played on Super Bowl Sunday. Was the <laughs> was I'll let him tell the story. But he has. As of last uh, Thursday, he had only played here one time. Holy crap. Pros don't get to play. I mean, if you you know what it's like. I mean, you know Tony out at Eagle Point. I mean, those guys don't get to play very once once the golf season starts, man, they if you want to be if you want to play a lot of golf, don't become a head professional. They're either sitting on a tractor or have a rake in their hand, have a shovel in their hand, have a a holes time, in their hand. Fixing a hot dog. <laughs> so I was going to say selling a hot dog to somebody. I mean, it doesn't matter. They're working on a golf cart. I mean, it, a golf pro, people think that that may be a great – and it is a great job. I'm not going to knock it. But it is a hard, hard-working job. There is so much that they have to do that I don't think people even give it a second thought. No, there's no question about that. I mean, you look at overall, you, you, the, 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 one of the benefits is being out here. And, the, and, I mean, look at the environment we're staring at today. I mean, it's just beautiful and nice. And, uh, but, I mean, so he's got a great office. But, man, they put in some hours. <laughs> they get here early and they leave late. Yeah, it, it is a beautiful office, that's for sure. But, yeah, you mentioned Tony. I mean, I, I remember last year seeing him at uh, midnight turning, turning, turning sprinkler heads on or whatever yeah. the deal is. Yeah. I mean, it's – it's a crazy nonstop deal, man. But uh, a brand new one like this too. Can you imagine the responsibility um, 
of, 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 of that because it's a brand new course. It's got to, you've got to maintain the, the, the image. It's got to maintain that. It's got to keep that luster up and, and have that yeah. great name. There's a lot of pressure on, on the pro. No doubt. Hey, Coach Mayer is getting ready to walk around the corner uh, to your right in a minute. So you can say hi to him, but you're, you're exactly right about, you know, when you are a, a head pro, you have to be a great manager because you've got to manage the maintenance crew. You got to manage the people that work in the pro shop. You got to manage the cart kids. I mean, you, you have got to be able to, to go out and, and get people to respond to you and none more important in a brand new course than the maintenance crew. And these guys out here, at, I mean, I don't, I don't even know how you could say what a great job they've done. They have turned this thing from what it was, which was rated last in the big 10 to you can't be more proud as an IU fan and, and alumni that this is the course that's at your university. It is, it is that amazing. Absolutely. I see. I think we're almost at a time where you can take a break. So uh, when we come back, we will uh, talk to Jimmy St. John. I was there, Coach Mayor. If he walks around the corner, may grab him too. So you never know. But uh, we're at coming to you from the foul course on Indiana University here on this Tuesday, June 6th. Appreciate you listening to Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Larry. We're back with more right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Rain Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the Golf Club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. This is James Blackman Jr., former Indiana Hoosier. Make sure you're keeping up with the Hoosiers on Indiana Sports Beat. 
Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. When you fall like Welcome back to Indiana Sports Speed with Coyle O'Leary coming to you today live from the foul course at Indiana University on this beautiful, beautiful Bloomington day and could not be happier now to be joined by the man who makes it all responsible, Jimmy St. John, the club pro. Hey, Jimmy, Jimmy how, how are you doing, brother? Jim, I'm doing great. You're right. It's a beautiful day. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous out here. I mean, you must have ordered this weather, especially for this week, opening week. Uh, and I know that you don't have an open tea time, so thank you for taking time to join us because I know you're extremely busy. But, man, it's just been an unbelievable success so far. It really has. It's, it's such a beautiful piece of property where the old course was and what Steve Smyers and Fuzzy Zeller and our director of golf, Greg Bishop, have done with this property is just unbelievable. It's a championship golf course now. It really, really is beautiful test and uh, I know Leary's been out there and he's checked it out. I don't know if it ain't him up or not, but uh, it's it's got the better of me already, and I'm not too bad. It's a difficult test, but uh, mm. you know, just such a prize for Indiana University. We're so proud. Well, we we will not base uh, my play on what kind of golf course it was. I promise you that. Uh, because I, I did not play well. I was intimidated by Don Fisher and Eric Sewer and Buck Sewer. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, they get to trash talking, and, and I just can't – mentally, I can't handle that kind of thing. So You're the big trash the, talker. You're the king of trash talking. Uh, not that day. Like, I was uh, – <laughs> I, I wasn't very good. But the course itself, I mean, you know, I tried to explain to some people that the greens are are like – the course has been here for 20 years already. And, and that to me is, is one of the things that just shows what an unbelievable job and amount of effort you guys have put into this thing in the last year or so. Well, you're right. They, they are beautiful. The fairway is beautiful right now. And, and thanks, Todd. That means a lot coming from you because uh, everybody knows. I mean, if you don't know, Todd's no hack, right? Todd's got game. So, yeah, you uh, got it. He, he does sure do. does, boy. Yeah, we are, uh, we are we're really – happy to hear that from you and, and agreed it's just it's beautiful the people have been fantastic that have been coming out and of course we're under the covid restrictions still but we're we're happy to be one of the first uh facilities of indiana university to open back up to the public and we're trying to do that as responsibly as we can and uh people have just been really accepting it's Hoosier nation baby and we love Hoosier nation and, and they're taking real good care of us and we're trying to do the same yeah, Jimmy, we're we're on in a lot in some different places. So if somebody, because I, I know it's so busy this week, I, I understood that the, the first day of tea time sold out in like fifteen minutes. If someone wants to play, what's their best option? What best time? Uh, is there a better day of the week uh, to call it? Especially if they're traveling from, say, Evansville or Southern Indiana or wherever. That's right. Uh, right now, with the restrictions, when you book online, you can do that at foulcourse.com. That's the P F A U. Um, you can get on it when you do that four days in advance amid the COVID restrictions. And uh, you can do that for a foursome. What we can't do is pair people up without their permission right now. And that makes perfect sense. We're glad to do that. If you've got a group less than that, give us a call at the shop. Uh, again, as you mentioned, we are super busy. Uh, we'll try to get to each and every one of those calls. That number, 812 855 seven five four three so just keep in mind four days in advance right now uh and if you got to force them the best way to go is online and book that for them well, uh, we'll get that information. We'll get that out on the site to the hoosier.com site as well. We'll get that out there, but I know you're extremely busy and I really appreciate you taking a few minutes to spend with us, man. But, uh, the course is looking absolutely beautiful. As I sit here, I just watched two deer run across the course as the guys are practicing on the putting green. You talk about a picturesque scene. It doesn't get any better than that. Absolutely beautiful. It's super honor for me to be on your guys' podcast. And, uh, thanks for inviting me and, uh, want to get you both out there as soon as we can. And everybody who's listening, please come out, uh, check it out because we got a real jam here. Absolutely. Jimmy St. John, the club pro here at the foul course in the university joining us. Thank you so much, Jimmy. And he is not lying, man. I'm sitting, like I said, I, I'm looking here to, and to watch those two deer run across it was pretty, there's a third now, as I am talking, I'm, I've got the three 
guys on the putting green and between me and the deer as they're running across this open expanse of green fields. And it's, it's an absolutely beautiful sight. Yeah. And, and you know, if you, if you're familiar with what the course was before and how it kind of winds back into the trees and the woods back there, um, it, it goes even farther back now than it did. And so I, we had, we had just some incredible views back. It's, you kind of forget you're in, you know, not just Bloomington, but Indiana. I mean, there's some, just some great scenes back there. And we had deer running all around us when we were in the back of the, of the course. Now we were the first group that got to go out. I got in the, you know, I got in the presidential VIP group with fish and, and the sewers, but, uh, you know, we got back there in that back area and you will not recognize this as being on the, the, the majority of it on the same property as what that old course was. It's just, it, I, I can't talk enough about how beautiful it is. It, it's, it's awesome. Well, I'll be the first to admit, I, I do not remember the, I mean, I played the old course, but it's been too long for my feeble mind to remember. All, I, the only thing I remember is seeing an albino deer out here once. That was incredible. <laughs> blew my mind i mean a solid white deer it was mind-boggling never seen anything like that before but uh yeah but I, well yeah I, I can tell you the, the the course it wasn't that it wasn't difficult that was the thing to try that i tried to explain to me it wasn't like it was super easy or wide open it was not that easy it just was never in great shape it was not fun it didn't have like picturesque holes it kind of just went back and forth almost like you would expect a municipal course to be. And it just, you know, in, in today's world, when you're talking about facilities, I mean, we talk about, you know, the cook hall and the practice facility at IU and all the different things and how awesome they are. Well, you know, this is a university course. It's not just a golf course. It's a university golf course. So it's part of the facilities. And, and it just wasn't, you know, wasn't, it was rated last in the big 10. It's hard to be rated last consistently. And, and they did it every year. And that's how poor the course was. And I can tell you, it may be a while before they get ranked above the Ohio State and Purdue course because they're both really nice as well. Um, but it's going to be in the conversation. And it's going to be right up there going from dead last to, to in the top three in a very short period of time. Yeah, you talk, you call it, it looked like a municipal, it looked like it almost was a municipal course. I mean, that's exactly the definition that I don't think you could have described it better because that's exactly what I remembered it as. It was like you said, it was tough holes, but it was just choppy. It wasn't pretty. It was just, eh. and now the, go, the going back and forth. I mean, that's kind of the, de- you know, in the municipal courses, you get them, you get where you go, you know, you go down one hole and they come back the next hole and then down the next hole and they're just parallel to each other. And, and, you know, the, the old course was kind of that way. Um, but, you know, really, it, it, this is kind of how I could describe it is, is you know, you know how much I love to play golf. And, and I, I really would play just about anywhere. And they could have let me play for free at the IU course on a daily basis, and I wouldn't have played it. I would pay to go somewhere else and play. It was that just kind of boring and not exciting to play. And it was never in great shape. These greens are, I mean, if you're a golfer and you enjoy golf, even if you're not a great golfer, but you, but you get, can appreciate, you know, the good greens, you could go to Augusta and appreciate the beauty of it. This course has that same kind of effect and the greens are so good that it just makes it fun to play. It makes it harder because the greens roll so fast and they're so pure, but they're so beautiful and it's so fun to watch. So so fun to play it that, I mean, I I can't talk enough about it. It, It's that awesome. It it certainly is. And I mean, and, and this is something that is going to last forever and ever. And you talk about uh, golf is not it's a sport. It's only going to get better. I, You're right. That's the good part. Yeah, it's just going to get better and better. And, and golf is not a sport that IU has, uh, I would say, excelled at uh, the way they, they do in so many other sports. I mean, you got Jeff Overton, of course, who was nice enough to join us today. But we don't have a lot of those names. And that's kind of unusual because Indiana has done so many sports that they do so well in. And uh, this is going to change that. It's probably, it may take a while, but this is going to change that very thing. Now golfers are going to come here uh, and the program will be able to take off. Yeah, you know what? It, the, the facility itself will have a major impact on that. And, and you're exactly right from the standpoint of, you know, Purdue has had some golfers that, uh, that have had a lot of success and are, and are currently having a lot of success on the PGA Tour. And a lot of that has to do with recruiting and the facilities that they were able to practice at and play at 
and it prepared them for where they are. And, you know, it's not going to, you're not going to snap your fingers. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, Indiana isn't all of a sudden going to have, you know, seven guys win majors next year, but they are going to have guys that, that start to over time, you know, get themselves in a position to get out there and play on tour and, you know, be more recognized. It only takes one here and there. Um, you know, and, and Jeff Overton had, you know, he was a, he was on the Ryder Cup. I mean, we're not talking about someone who wasn't very good. It, when, when Jeff Overton played on the Ryder Cup, he was the only player that had ever made the Ryder Cup team that had never won a tournament on the PGA Tour. And, and you know, there's only been two up to this point right now that can put in that category, and the other one's Ricky Fowler. So you know what level that puts Jeff Overton at. He's in yeah. that category. That's 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 saying a lot right there. I mean, because uh, Ricky Fowler is a guy who you don't know if you don't know, you don't know, you don't realize he hasn't won. <laughs> if you don't know, you don't watch golf. You yes, don't know who Ricky Fowler. Is. No, no. What I meant is, if you don't know he hasn't won, it's just because you don't realize. Oh, he, he hasn't won, huh? Because he's been out there long enough, and he's so good, and he's always in contention uh, so many times. So when a guy like that doesn't win, you're like, oh wow, that's a shocker. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, no, no question about it. Especially because he was part of that group of guys with Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas and uh, Jason Day and, and Brooks Kepka and those guys that were all kind of a group of guys that were the same age-ish and all the other guys won majors. And Ricky uh, Ricky up to this point still has not put himself in that category. He, I think he will, obviously, over time. Uh, if we all remember Phil Mickelson, it took him a long time to win a major as well. But, um, yeah, Ricky Fowler is, is in a when – you're, when you're mentioned in a category with Ricky Fowler – you've obviously had a pretty successful career and, and that's exactly what Jeff Overton is. Heck yeah, man. Uh, we missed having Alec on the show last Friday. He uh, we couldn't join us on that day, but he'll be back this Friday and we'll get to Alec lastly. We'll be talking basketball recruiting because there's going to be a he gonna have a lot. To, yeah. He's going to have oh, a lot. Oh my about. gosh. And that was forget about miss last week. Just, just yesterday alone is, is enough to load it up, but we'll have all kinds of stuff to get to uh, as things starting to uh, crack back out. But uh, looking forward to that. I cannot thank Jeff Overton enough again for joining us here and of course jimmy st john the club pro, club pro here at the, the foul course indiana university I want to thank uh, caitlin for helping us from the uh, sports media department as well and a big thanks to everybody uh, out here i hope you guys uh, get a chance to come out we're going to get the information up on the website up on the hoosier.com uh, we'll get that out to you so you can find that but it's an absolutely beautiful thing uh, to look at my side so squad play. Uh, looking forward to it. Until tomorrow, for Todd and Jimmy, I'm Jim Coyle. I will see you on the radio.